Today, we go back in time, and we use a trailer that I didn't make. A while back, my good friend, Art Fowler, you guys probably know that name from both this channel as well as Small Jaws, he sent me a package. So he's got a fairly new company called Three Hands Custom Tackle. If I remember right, Art, I'm hoping that I do, three hands is hand poured, uh, hand tied, and hand painted because he does like cranks and stuff. He does some awesome work and he reached out because we talk often and said, hey, I'd like to make you some stuff. Uh, what are you interested in? The one thing that I don't have are chunks. So I said, if you've got any of those, I'd love to have some you can send my way. And he did. Let me send or show you rather some of my three hands custom tackle goodies and then we're going to use one of these in today's build these are from bass tackle this is a three and a half inch black and blue he also asked me what colors i wanted and when it comes to like day in day out fishing i'm sorry i'm old school like black blue green pumpkin Maybe some brown with some flare or something like that. Um, maybe I'm boring when it comes to fishing day in, day out. But that's what I like. Art's the guy that turned me on to um, mint chocolate or um, mint brown from Lureworks. And he made me some of those. He also likes to put a tiny little bit of purple in his, which really makes it look nice. And then some green pumpkin with blue flake. Same style, this is the two inch mini chunk, perfect for uh, finesse jigs. Here's the same one in green pumpkin with blue and that same mint brown. He also has some BTS um, chunks in here. These are very interesting. This is the 2.25 BTS craw trailer ditch craw. So green pumpkin blue black and blue as well. He has also sent me that same mint brown in the same thing, which we're going to use today. Lastly, he has also sent me a pretty special bait. Um, this one is from Israel. So these are green pumpkin with red claws. And this is the, um, I think, I don't know if they have a specific name. It's just the print de lure craw. When it comes to a profile craw, I mean, right? That's about as realistic as it gets. Thin profile, right? Realistic claws, not a flapping action. This is very much profile, long antennas out of the front. You can get it with the tail or without if you don't want these um, extra pieces in the back. I had to see what this thing looked like in the water. So check this out. So I put it on a pretty simple little shaky head uh, that I had painted with um, copper mine and popped it down in there and man, check out the action. I mean, if that doesn't look like a real crawl floating around, I would pop it, pop, pop, like it's fleeing away from a predator. Oh my land, it just looks incredibly realistic when it stands up straight, especially on a stand up shaky head. I mean, looks like it's totally in defensive position and ready to be chomped by a big, nasty bass. So, thank you, Art. These will go to great use. And if you guys are in the market for some chunks or some of these sweet uh, print allure craws, be sure to uh, get a hold of Art. Just drop a comment down in the comments, and I'm sure he will see it there and get a hold of you. So, as I said, this is the little dude that we are going to be using today. How are we going to use it though? We are reaching all the way back to August of uh, almost two years ago, and we are going to tie up an SDG Whisper. So those of you that have been around the channel for a while, that may sound familiar, although we do have a lot of new subscribers. So a Whisper, uh, just what it sounds like, W-H-I-S-S, S, there's two S's in my whisper, P-E-R, stands for weightless, skirted, swinging, pitching rig. So what I wanted way back when and developed this bait was a weightless presentation that had a skirt for 
profile and bulk um, that you could use for a creature bait and kind of be a weightless wacky rig for the jig or creature bait world here's the deal though the whisper was based on an EWG hook and these little these little dudes here don't really work with an EWG there's no body to them right it's just a little chunk so what are we gonna do well let's turn our attention to the vise and I'll show you what I have in mind so here we go in the vise this is a mustad short shank stinger hook for um, spinner baits and such and I thought it would be a good platform to work off of uh, with a couple of minor alterations so uh, I'm gonna be tying with 210 denier flat wax nylon in olive today first things first let's put on our thread base I'm gonna start at the eye and take it back about halfway thereabouts that's good so the first thing we're gonna need um, in this build is a uh, wire weed guard or not weed guard a wire um, bait keeper it'll help keep that chunk up onto the hook in our uh, application tie that guy in right on the shank I go behind it and then in front watch this edge right here it's a sharp edge from having cut the metal and then put a couple of whip finishes just to secure it in place and now we'll carefully move our thread past that spot there and all the way up and then spin it. So before we keep going, I'm gonna grab some Loon um, water-based head cement and just hit those threads right around the bait keeper just to make sure it stays intact. So the EWGs that usually go with the Whisper, um, those by default are weedless. This one obviously is not, but I'd still like it to be as weedless as possible. So. I've got a standard wire weed guard here. I just bent the end into an L. We're actually going to tie this on and then bend it back so we get a little bit of uh, weed protection. Beforehand though, I'm going to put just a tiniest little drop of super glue right on those threads. Don't need much. There we go. That will help uh, lock our weed guard in place and keep it from turning too awfully bad. that pull it down right on top and there we go so let's bend our weed guard back we don't need the full length as you can see it's it's way too long so as a general rule um, I take a weed guard, a wire weed guard, just past the barb. So, hold on. Got them. Needed some angle cutters here. Let me take these. Cut that just off the edge or off the tip. And there we go. So now our hook is ready to go. We can pop it out of the vise and attach it to our um, fish shank. Just put the eye right into this big section. And here we go. We are all set. So our wire form, um, or our fish shank rather, is um, in the front here. We're going to tie our skirt onto this. And we've got our hook attached, everything set up, and I just use a little clip here to keep the hook back. So let's get our, um, our thread base down. We're going to close that gap. Beautiful. 
So mint brown. So in the light, I can see the mint part of this, which is that green, beautiful green aspect to it. <clears throat> and then of course the brown. So what I thought would go very well with this is a skirt color that I've been wanting to use, not sure I ever have on the uh, channel, and that is watermelon blue. So it's got this um, iridescence to it. Blue and green pumpkin, blue and watermelon, some of my favorite stuff, right? I mean, that's why Art made me some green pumpkin blue trailers. So I love this color. A little less popular, but uh, equally beautiful in my opinion, is blue and brown together. So not only are we going to be using watermelon blue, but we're also going to... Um, complement that with some brown round rubber. Round rubber on these works especially well because it really fills out and it encourages that skirt to poof uh, either when you're not moving it on the on the bottom or even as it flows down into the water column that round rubber really makes a big profile. First things first though we got to get our watermelon blue on. And if you guys can't tell my air conditioner finally turned off, so maybe you can hear me a little bit better. I don't really have to worry too much about measuring this out because we're going to end up um, cutting the skirt to fit this uh, this chunk, right? It's not as much soft plastic hanging off the back. The, um, the um, stinger hook here is a lot smaller than a typical EWG, so long as it's in the ballpark we'll be fine and now the round rubber that around. try not to trap any silicone and that is that so, put some whip finishes in here. Three, four. That's it. Let's cut our tabs free. We'll go all the way down to the end of the silicone as usual. We can always trim back. And then, as usual, um, it's best to separate these uh, these tabs into about a quarter so since this is half we'll separate it in two pull it back as far as you can and cut it slowly and all those pieces will break free oh I forgot a step it's all right we'll pull these front ones a little clip on here do the same with the back try to clip up as many as possible that's good we need some water-based uh, head cement on our threads to make sure that they don't pull out there we go so now we can separate and I'll unclip this guy, flip it over, and there it is. Weightless, free swinging, skirted, creature bait rig, pitching rig, only today we're going to put this little dude right on the bottom of it. Mm, mm, mm. Now obviously the skirt is still too long. We need to uh, cut that down, but check that out. And then, if you want to see the uh, business end of it, there it is. So, our little keeper is holding on to that chunk nice. We've got our weed guard, and it's a perfect fit for the stinger hook. So, all that is left to do now is trimming. Um, this skirt I'm gonna take it to just below the nose so most of these claws are exposed once I do that then I will get you some close-up shots 
and we'll go back over to the test tank and show you how this is hey there buddy are you doing all right i'm doing great as a matter of fact i'm on the road yeah 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 the bad days are gone and now i'm on the road the weather is clear so i've been experimenting lately with different ways to rig this whisper We've done weightless, which is how and why it was originally created, right? That weightless presentation. I also have a video where I fished it as a Carolina rig and it worked really well there. But what I hadn't done until recently is actually just put it on a classic, simple Texas rig. So that's what I'm gonna show you in the tank. Um, unpegged Texas rig, although you could peg it if you wanted to as well. Well, Art, my friend, first of all, thank you for all those baits. It was a pleasure um, creating a brand new whisper to highlight that sweet little chunk. I'm gonna get a lot of use out of those. I sincerely appreciate it. Here I am at Maple. See the truck right there behind me. I had every intention and put a lot of effort into catching some donkeys on film with your bait, uh, well, with our bait, with your trailer. And uh, I caught, or I hooked one, lost him at the bank. I hooked a big one and he broke me off. So uh, the fish catches are yet to come. Rest assured though, I think we've proven that that thing will catch. For everybody else, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to see some more just like it, then click right here. If you're curious about the name SDG, then click right here. Otherwise, until the next time, I'll see you guys at the Vice.